stupid answers on my part. <laughs> so, make sure you're comfortable in your chair, and also make sure you're going. To, you have water to to drink because. Maybe inside and not in the sun, and I know we're sitting down and everything, but you can still dehydrate, and that can lead to feeling dizzy, it can lead to um, feeling tired and just not kind of quite cognitive of what's going on. So, do, do, do take some sips of water as, as we go through the session. So, rubbing your hands together and tapping over your face. Up over your head. And down to one shoulder. The other side. Upper part of your chest. Belly. And then the legs. And then sit back. So there's always an inclination to think that we shouldn't move around when we're um, in hot weather like this. But remember that the cob's own, the so body's own healing mechanism sh really should requires some movement to make it work. And so a little bit of gentle movement can actually be quite cooling. And obviously we have to take into account the fact that it is hot, and that maybe some things we're not gonna do, taking care in the sun and so on and so forth. But getting the blood moving can release this quality that we sometimes refer to in Chinese medicine as stagnation. Everything kind of like gums up. Um, a little bit of movement can be a good thing. So to facilitate that movement, we want to really get that sense of dropping back in this, to let our center of gravity drop, stop the stiffening, the straining that comes with poor posture. So settle into the chair. Notice if there's an effect on things like your breathing as you sit here. As, as, as your chest starts to clear a little bit, there's a bit more movement to the lungs and lower down in the body. Remember, you want to breathe as though your lungs were down in your belly rather than stuck up in your chest. I'm not trying to breathe in any particular way, just allow it to come quite freely and naturally. And then, again, noticing that as you do release some of that tight, stiff feeling. It's kind of holding in the heat in a way. You're still supported, you're supported by the chair. <clears throat> and we notice that more. And we're gonna take that awareness into the more upright stances so that we're aware of how we can be upright, how we can move around without that straining and tightening up. So this first part of the class is really as much about becoming familiar with certain sensations and feelings that we want to try and maintain and develop through the session as it is about anything sort of, uh, physical, shall we say. So training for the mind as much as anything else, as always. So then bring your feet in. Find a good position for yourself in the chair. Always remembering to have the option on sort of a cushion or something behind you or underneath your feet. Make sure you're comfortable. And again, that feeling of dropping, this time straight down, of course. A kind of draining away of tightness and stiffness, or melting away, if you prefer the term, dissolving away. 
leaving behind again an awareness of the chair but particularly in the upper part of your body this sort of stronger feeling deeper in you think of the skeleton think of your spine for instance holding you up but make sure you don't tighten up around the spine we want to feel that there's the possibility for a little bit of movement so the overall sort of consistency of our body should be like a kind of thick liquid rather than concrete becoming aware of that means that we're more likely to initiate the movement from that point so rather than so as we start to turn our head you can start doing that now rather than this being a strain on muscles in your neck and your shoulders think of this movement building up through your spine you're not turning your spine but it's, it, it's like you know, if you ride a bike, it's the wheels that carry you along, but it's the push down on the pedals that, that moves you. Just aware of areas that feel stiff or tight. And I think it's not always acknowledged. We realize in colder weather, we can get stiff. But in the hot weather, we can, can get stiff for slightly different reasons. The joints can swell up. The body swells up in general and that can restrict the movement. And again, gentle movement will help to release that. And then your shoulders. And going forwards. <clears throat> and down to your sides. Just let that familiar routine begin to work in your body and your mind complicated in this starting set. And take the opportunity just to focus on different parts of your body. So here for instance this very gentle, very subtle rotation of the top of your arm in the shoulder joint. Almost as though your, your shoulder joint was being massaged from the inside. And then winding around. And back the other way. That internal massage and feeling is something that it's often associated with Tai Chi. At the moment we're feeling it in individual parts of the body, but as we build into the main set of movements, we start to feel it as a, an overall effect. Let your hands rest. Easing forwards. And push back. So as always, how we're approaching the movement in our minds has a big influence on how we move. And in particular, the, the images that we use, the ideas that we have, the feelings, approach, are very much influential on small changes in our body. And those small changes will, will build up. So, so what's happening in your back? I said earlier, the, 
whole body should have a fluid quality. I want your spine to feel supported, but not held tightly. And the image I've sometimes used with people to describe that feeling is as though we were as though it was a plant just floating forwards and backwards in water. So the water supports the plant, but also allows it to move slightly. And it also means that the amount of effort required to, to move the spine is relatively small. If you have a, a, a tank full of water and a plant in it, you could just blow very lightly on the surface of the water, even tap on the glass to produce a wave, and that would produce a little bit of movement. And because it's quite deep in the body, that movement as it radiates out will, will increase. So that's where we put our attention, that's where we put our effort, and we simply allow the movement to build. When we turn, we want to turn again from deeper down in the body, in the belly and the hips, turn slightly. In the martial side of Tai Chi, there's a, an interesting phrase. It says that four ounces will overcome a thousand pounds. In other words, a small amount of effort made in the right place at the right time can have quite a big effect. And it's that same principle that I'm talking about here. And then in the other direction. So we're not twisting our back, we're turning the whole of the body. And going around. And then back the other way. And then Come back to the upright position. Think of this upright position and how you're maintaining it. Obviously your feet and your hips are important, so about the spine, in line with the, with, with the pull of gravity. That's going to change slightly now because we're going to start moving one foot. So there'll be a slight shift to one side, but we want to make sure that, that we don't to really strain in, in the upper part of the body just to move the foot. So as a first step, if you'll pardon the pun, just pull your knee up and drop down. So if I show you from the side what I'm doing, obviously it's slightly awkward, but here, there, see, I'm just doing this. And what I want to do is to try and do this without some kind of associated movement like this or straining or anything like that. It's a rotation of your hip, so it's using a relatively small part of the body, or the rest of your body, the rest of your awareness, is settled in that, set, in that central equilibrium, as we describe it. And then just raise your toes, push out, put your heel down, press gently into the floor, and come back. Just take a little bit of time to consider this action of stepping, which I, I always feel we, 
risk taken for granted until for some reason or another we lose the ability and I've, I've worked with a number of people who one, one reason or another have lost that ability and of course something that is almost mundane to most of us suddenly becomes very precious and then on the other side first of all just raising your knee I think for me one of the really interesting things about Tai Chi as a whole is that it draws our attention to what are actually everyday things. Tai Chi movements are sometimes described as being natural. And I think what that means is that they're, they're movements that are if you like, inherent within how our bodies are structured. And quite often movements that we could make a hundred times a day without thinking about them. As soon as we start to think about them, they become difficult. Raise your toes and push out and back. But it's that awareness that really starts to transform them. There's something about bringing your awareness to something that can initiate these very subtle, small changes in the body that will build up. Okay, so come back to this to the sitting position. One image I sometimes have of these very small movement is that they're like bricks. And so we work with the bricks and eventually the, the bricks are built up into the house. And in that sense, your your mind has the plan. Your mind is the the, the builder that brings them all together. So try and Keep an image like that. Try and keep a focus on, on the smaller movements without having to think hard about them so that there's still a presence as we go into the main body of exercises. So a fisherman cast a net. And the other thing about the awareness of small movements is that it generally starts as a kind of physical thing. And we can think of small areas of the body expanding and contracting, small changes in muscles and so on. But it leads us to an awareness of the movement, the flow of energy itself. The, the barriers between the two aren't nearly as solid as we might think. So we have these three elements. We have the body itself, the mechanics, if you like, however subtle. We have the movement or the energy, however you care to think about it. We have the mind or awareness, kind of, in a way, binding all these things together into one whole. And that, that whole is what I would label as the chi, when body, mind and energy are actually working as one harmonious unit. Here you go with this, I'm just going to put another light on, just realised it's, my arms are a little bit in shadow. Okay, that will literally shed a little bit of light. And then this time, going forwards and over. So imagine the ball in front of you, your arms are draped over the ball and you, as your legs push you back, the hands just kind of think of them sliding over the ball or if you prefer think of them rolling the ball in
is there any number of things you can focus on? And of course, we want to think about our weight moving from hips to feet, the compression and, and release of our legs, and to a degree in the lower part of our back. But there are other things as well. Remember that fluid feeling in your spine. Your spine just extends out and then contracts back. <clears throat> as though there was a little elastic thread running up through the middle of it. And as you go forward, that's pulled out a little bit, never tight. And of course, you know, there are these little muscles between the vertebrae. So it's reasonable to think that the spaces between the vertebrae themselves expand and contract. Again, these are all small movements in our body, but the cumulative effect is quite big. And then drawing your arms apart. Pigeon spreads its wings. We can build on that stronger feeling deeper within the body, that support from the body, by imagining the resistance to the movement. Imagine pulling out an elastic band, maybe when you go forward, squeezing on a ball. We could imagine it the other way around, that you want the elastic band to contract slowly and you want the ball to expand slowly. So they give you two different views of the same movement if you work with those images. If you're squeezing on the ball here, you would feel the pressure against the inside of your arm as you push in and your chest would contract. But if you're imagining the ball expanding, you want to do it slowly, but sort of restricting that movement carefully and so on and so forth. The movement is all of those things. Now pushing a wave. Or pushing the boat is an, is an alternative name for this movement, if that is a better image for you. So there's a subtle conditioning of our body And there's a subtle condition in the movement itself. It, the energy will become stronger. And that change I, I sort of experience as the difference between feeling a light breeze over my skin and feeling water just draining gently over my skin, a kind of denser feel. And then your hands fisted. Frustratingly, what we often notice when we approach Tai Chi with this subtlety is that there are parts of the body that are simply stuck or blocked in one way or another, where we don't feel those qualities of movement, smoothness, massage, however you think of it. But again, here, a trained awareness can be very useful and sometimes just the act of bringing your attention to those areas can be quite healing <clears throat> sometimes it may take a little bit more than that i like to use an image sometimes so i'm a bit stiff in my shoulder i imagine it's like water 
flowing through that area because water, I think of water flowing over a rock in a riverbed, it gradually smooths it off. Well, you might just think about how you're doing the movement. There might be something that you're doing that is aggravating that part of the body. Can you change your posture, the movement, your approach to the movement to make it smoother? Now do one more of these going forwards, and then we're going to go back to pigeon spreads its wings, and we're going to do one of each. It's also true that different movements will affect our body in different ways. Now we go into pushing a wave, and again we can become aware of that and find ways to use the movements to help us to deal to work with those areas carefully. And then starting again, so pigeon spreads its wings, pushing a wave, it has that little rotation to our arm, and then punch with both fists, which again, slightly stronger has that rotation in, in the arm and then back to the pigeon. The Tai Chi, of course, has these very involved sequences and they really have an effect on the mind. So they're, they're, again, there's an obvious physical element, but also the mind training element is, is really enhanced by trying to follow a sequence carefully and being aware of the effect of the different movements, both what we might call externally, the shapes of the movements, but also internally, the feel of the movement. Do one more round of this and try and keep the same focus of attention, the same mode of awareness when we come out of the sequence. So now turning your hands out a little bit further as you open your fingers, winding out. I think this is the last one, so coming back and now changing from a predominantly horizontal to a predominantly vertical movement with exactly the same awareness, same sort of way of moving. Noting how our hips and our feet push down as we feel the expansion upwards between hips and shoulders. Imagine here in the belly, there's a, again, a ball. And as you come down, that ball gets compressed. And then eventually, to compress any more would become a strain. So you just allow the ball to expand. And that will both create the upward movement and the downward movement. Well, 
One more time. Now change into the wild goose. One more time. Part in the clouds. The awareness that we build in any one movement or set of movements is transferable to all the movements. Like anything else, if you Become, if you sort of watch the clouds, you'll become more aware of clouds in general. If you study flowers, then you'll become more aware of flowers and plants in general. One more time. And then dragon plucks the stars from the sky. So one of the reasons we repeat movements and one of the reasons in sessions like this we start, you know, particularly in the first half or so of the class, sometimes the whole class, in very familiar movements, is to give us a chance to really work with these underlying principles and ideas and approaches. If you're constantly struggling to see what a movement is doing and you can't remember the movement, it's much harder to do that. One more time. And both hands together. So again, we've got two different movements, our back lengthening and contracting and then broadening and contracting. Now we're going to add in the turn. And we want to make sure that when we turn, we don't put pressure on those broadening movements. So we turn very carefully from our hips. So we have these two pathways. One is the turning, one is the broadening. And they will cross over, but they shouldn't press on each other. That's quite difficult to do. We have to be very careful about how we turn, about how far we turn.
So we will always turn from our hips, from our waist, not from our shoulders. We don't want to twist up the back. So if you twist up the back and push your arms out, then your body's working against itself. And that's not harmonious. One more round. And then scooping the sea and looking at the sky. Chinese medicine, <clears throat> the balancing, the harmonizing of that movement, or if you prefer to think of, it, of those three elements of body, mind, and movement, body, mind, and energy is seen as one of the primary goals of the art, the science, the medicine. And any disharmony is seen as a, a, a root of illness. And then hands fisted. Now you can change sides. Just the heel on the floor of the extended leg. So the movements become a little bit more complex, a bit more challenging to maintain those qualities. So we sort of think back to some of the earlier movements. If you're struggling with this a little bit, because it's quite a strong exercise. Look how you know the spine felt in Fisherman Cast a Net or something like that. So you can just remind yourself, remind your body that you can move like that. And then grasping the tiger's ears. One more time. And come and sit again. In Chinese medicine, one of the phrases used is that the, the energy will follow our mind. 
and the body will follow the energy. Two things about that. One is mind is spelt with a capital M in this context and embraces not just what we would normally think of as mind, like our, our thinking, but imagery and subtle awareness and all these elements that we bring into Tai Chi. The second thing is that it's a useful catchphrase, but for me, it's a much more three-way thing. It's not just a, a, a linear mind, energy, body sort of uh, formula. The, the, those three elements interact. If we're feeling a bit kind of you know, stuck in the heat, if you woke up this morning, as a lot of people would have done, I expect, feeling that you didn't get enough sleep because it was too hot and blah, 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 blah. Maybe going out and doing some movement, and experiencing in, in, in the cooler morning, that fluidity can have a feedback to your awareness. And sort of just as the body gets massaged, it's almost like the mind gets massaged. So these three elements should, should really interact with each other. Give yourself a moment to sit coming back to just the basic posture and that sense of equilibrium because once again this is what we will want to find when we come to the standing. And then once again just rubbing your hands together and tap it over your face over your head and neck down to one shoulder and your arm the side the part of the chest the belly and then your legs and as always the legs are very important help to get some of that kind of dull ache out of your legs that we can experience in the hot weather. Our legs can swell up quite considerably, particularly when you've been sitting down. So it's important to get them moving. And then stand. I'm going to move my chair out the way, but of course it's quite useful sometimes to have the support there when 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 you need it. I don't think you need the shadow of it. Might as well get rid of that. So feet are hip width apart, supporting your hips, hips supporting your shoulders. So that's the start of the process of finding that equilibrium is to, is, is to sort out the physical structure the gross physical structure of the the body we need that for everything else to start to work and then in your way just rock forwards and backwards if you felt that sense of your your spine floating forwards and backwards in the chair see if you can feel that again and in your mind just Try and get it to sort of, you know, imagine it working on your pelvis, your hips, your legs, and bring your hands out to your sides. Imagine it working in the bones of your arms and fingers. Imagine, do this in water. So you want to find a way to just let your hips drop back. And then your arms follow. Now, if you go back too far, you'll fall over. So now you want to go forwards. Have that idea, have that intent in your mind. And 
to allow your body to find out how to do this. If you, at the end of the session, if you decide you want a cup of tea, you'll go and put the kettle on. You won't have to think, right, I need to walk into the kitchen, put my hand out, wrap my fingers around the kettle and pick it up, then go over to the tap and wrap my other fingers. You don't, you don't need to do that. You just have this idea. You want a cup of tea, you want to put the kettle on, and the body does it. And it's that same mechanism we're trying to invoke here, but perhaps a little bit more consciously. It's always tricky. So again, a very simple exercise to practice, a simple but difficult idea. And then letting your weight come to rest just behind the ball of the foot, your hips dropping back, your hands curving under, cradling the ball. In the seated exercise, I said, imagine you know, the ball here. What you could do here is imagine you're sitting on the ball, one of these big blue balls you get in gyms. So you're straddling the ball, you're dropping down, and at a certain point, the ball will just push you up. But it will also push down into the ground. It doesn't just somehow sort of avoid the ground. And, you know, if it was on soft mud, you might not get pushed up. It might just sink in into the mud. So the expansion and contraction are not are not separate movements. They're part of a whole, and the upward and the downward are part of a whole. And we want to. Again, get a sense of balance and harmony between them. It's one of the reasons I try and avoid the idea of balancing on one leg or when we're stepping, because I think the term balance has a different context in Tai Chi. A change to the wild goose. And then part in the clouds. then turn one foot out step forward with the other foot same thing here if you were still straddling the ball you would move across to one leg you would sink down and then you would get pushed up so effectively your foot is pushing downwards in other words you take the time just to make that connection downwards don't just do this think about that all-important part of the movement where we really get a sense of the ground beneath our feet again and that's obviously important physically but also it just slows you down a little bit this interesting element of tai chi of really focusing and looking to build the slower quality which is a little bit at odds with how we often live our lives but it's an enormous benefit 
And that's a good example of where the physical act of connecting to the ground, of being, you know, of feeling your, your leg compressed or home, you're rooting down, however you think about it, feeds back to the mind. It just says, hey, you don't need to kind of like plan ahead. You don't need to think about what you're doing next. Just take that space and that spaciousness in mind and in body, of course, are really valuable. And then raising your toes and your heel. Somebody, I think it was a play using the phrase, stop the world, I want to get on. And you can feel like that sometimes. You can feel as though you're just being pulled along or it's like you're on a roller coaster. It's like, can we just stop for a moment? And Tai Chi has that quality of stopping, that quality of stillness within the movement. So the focusing of our attention isn't just about developing the physical movements. It's about also finding that there's that, the possibility of that stillness. And then just think about how we did this in the chair, got the equilibrium here, and you step in. Good, and then shift to the other side, the other leg. Remember, yeah, the wall is your friend. It can help you to, you know, and sometimes just touching the wall can help you to orientate. I was doing something this morning outside, but it was in, it was in quite a small space at that point. Um, it's quite a tricky exercise. And I felt myself getting, getting a bit wobbly and my, 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 I had my hands out and I just touched something and I can't even remember what it was, but it was just somehow that helps you to orientate. I wasn't holding on to it or anything like that. And if somebody helps you do that, then you say, oh yeah, it's just the hip. You know, it helped me to find where my, my, my stability was, where my center was. And then raising your toes and your heel. And so I've turned my front foot out a little bit. I find that helps to create a space in my hip, a physical space, and helps the weight sinking down. And then stepping in. First foot forwards. Fisherman cast the net. We'll do a few of these in a fixed step. And then we're going to add in that little step in we were just doing. So make sure that you're comfortable with this. And always remember, you know, you don't have to do the step in if it's not good for you. And be aware that if you overdo the movements with your arms, that you're far more likely to find yourself losing stability. So this time stepping in.
And then on the other side, I'm going to turn around so that you can see what I'm doing from the side. So here's the fixed step version. Take note of how far my arms are moving. It's actually not very far. And one of the things that happens is my arms are going back when my body's starting to go forward. So it's not that my arms are doing that. So my body's sort of leaving my arms behind for a moment. Same going back. And that leads to this sort of fluid, wave-like quality of movement through our body. Step in. And bring your feet back. Good. <coughs> Go back to your chair. <coughs> Just to remind people, um, every now and then, once a week, with each of the sessions that I do, is the ty different types of the sessions that I do. I, I, I put one up on my YouTube channel. Um, so if you want to go over a session again, this one will be up there soon. Um, feel free to dip into that and we'll be putting other things up there as well just to, to supplement these, these, these sessions. Uh, the address is on the email um, that I send out. If you've lost it, do, do get, get, get in touch. Lovely, so coming back and again, this returning to the mountain, qualities of fluidity, of stillness, of centre, of root, all of these things are really just words describing that central feeling and all the benefits that, that we actually get from that. And it would be lovely if we never lost that, but life isn't quite that simple. There's plenty of things that I said, you know, sometimes you feel like the, the, the world is accelerating with us stuck on it or whatever. So embrace tiger return to mountain, which is an idea of how we can come back. So hands down to your sides. Feeling already the pull of gravity, not straining against it, and eventually just allowing it to draw you back to your own center. And with that, that sense of coming back, however you experience it, One more round. And rest. Lovely. Thank you very much for joining in, everybody. And do check out the YouTube channel if you want to have a look at some other stuff. Some of the other sessions are up there as, as well. And hopefully see you again soon.
So if anybody has any questions, feel free to unmute yourself and ask. But other than that, I shall sign off. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. You take Bye. care, everybody. Yes, you too.